Well, hello there, my friend, and welcome to this week's broadcast. I am Anne LaFollett, a surface pattern designer, online educator, and creative entrepreneur, and you are very welcome here. I'm really excited to announce a summer spotlight series that's going to feature students from my From Doodles to Dollars mini course, as well as my Pattern Design Academy program. Over the course of the summer, I thought it would be really fun to inspire you by sharing their stories. And so I'm calling this little mini series the Student Spotlight Series. And over the course of the summer, I'll sprinkle in these stories for you so that you can get inspired and motivated to continue to make progress in your own creative journey. And so with that, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here today with quilter Nancy Myers. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. And where am I? I am in Michigan. Let's see, I got to go this way. Go the other direction. There, there you go, Michigan. This is crazy. Michigan, where that yellow dot is. Oh, look how cute you, you did a little, little map dot? for us. Yes, I do see that little dot. So what's the biggest well, city near that little dot? That little dot is Nuevo, Michigan. And the largest city to the west is Muskegon or to the south would be Grand Rapids. Fabulous. And we are a town of about 2,000, 2000 plus people here. Very and small. Very small. Now, one of the things I love to do at the very beginning of these conversations is to ask you to tell us when did your creative journey start? I can remember when I was in first grade. I was in a split classroom of first and second graders. And I think that's where it started. I got done with my work faster than the other first graders. And the teacher was a little floored, I guess. And she suggested that if I color, you know, on the math pages, they have two pairs and two three other pairs. If you would color your pictures, you'll get a reward. That kept me busy while the rest of them were still working on what two plus three was, I guess. But I was shading the pairs. So there was dimension and color and the right part was on one side. And yes, I got my reward every day. <clears throat> so that was the start of it. My journey has been really an interesting one. My dad worked at a lumber yard and he would bring home scrap lumber when I was a kid. And being the oldest, I was able to learn from him how to make things out of wood, learn to use the tools and such. So that was my next journey. Probably about the age of 10, I was sewing. And my mother would just say, well, let's go to the store, buy fabric. There you go. And she'd put me off in the room and I'd figure it out myself. So, but in college, we had to take a class. Not only do we take an intro to art class, but we took a class for industrial education for elementary teachers. And I thought, oh, okay. Oh my gosh. I found my love. Really? It was just, it was just, it was everything my dad had taught me, plus drafting and design work and production. Oh, it was just marvelous. So I asked the prof, how can I get a minor in this so I could possibly teach it? So he set up a schedule and I worked for two and a half years every summer to work on the classes for that. And that just got me going. When I was a teacher, I tried to bring in everything I could that would help kids learn by doing those art and building activities. So deep at heart, I guess I'm still a teacher, but I just love learning. That's awesome. And that's where. Yeah. And so that's and how we found each other, right? We found each other because we, you, so I don't know. How did we find each other? <laughs> We were, uh, you posted on the Craft Industry Alliance that you were having this free class in surface design. And I said, that sounds interesting. 
And I thought about my silk screen printing in college, and I love that. And I thought, well, maybe I'll find out how laptops and computers can do this. And I took your class, and I said, this is it. I'm going to sign up. And I then signed up for the academy. You came in through Doodles first, right? I I think was that your first, I mean, this was back in 2019. Yeah, right? Craft Industry Alliance reached out to me and said, oh, we'd really love you to teach about licensing. Oh, is that how it happened? Yeah, and so, they, so I said, of course, I'd be happy to. And and so you came through that. That was really, really early. And that was. So then you I must have taken like, my first master class. It was called the I it wasn't did. even called from doodles to dollars at the time. No, <laughs> it wasn't. I was trying to look back at my notes and I I have so many notes from your <laughs> Classes, from all of, right, exactly, and from yes. all of the modules in the academy. Well, that's fantastic. So you we, you have a lot to show us, and people absolutely love show and tell. But before we even <laughs> get there, you have to tell us a little bit more about your quilting journey, because then you can show us some of the gorgeous fabrics you're now making with your own designs. I started quilting. Again, I did it on my own, 1976, the bicentennial came and boy, quilting, there was an article in the newspaper and all things. And back then, you know, there weren't a lot of fabrics and they were pretty ugly. <laughs> but I got some that kind of coordinated and I did a quilt that is, I didn't even realize it's called Trip Around the World. But what I did was cut all these squares and I put them and started in a diamond shape and it got bigger and bigger. Then I moved to Nuevo and being a rural town, they have things like 4-H and a lot of girls learned from their grandmothers and such. So I found a little group of ladies and I never heard of a quilt guild before, but they were older ladies. And they did so much by hand, which was a great learning experience. And I stayed in that for a while. And I've gotten to the point where I'm publishing patterns. I'm making t-shirt quilts for people. I'm doing quilts for people's birthdays. I, I just do a lot. <laughs> One of the things that you learned when you came in and took doodles do to dollars, yes. and then you also purchased my academy program, was actually how to make your own patterns that you could turn into fabric. So talk to us a little bit about that and then show us some. I was president of our quilt guild back in 2000, 2003. I had three years. That was the max we could serve, which was good. But the one thing I kept trying to get was somebody to come and speak to us about pattern design and how do you get those patterns to print on fabric and repeat and repeat. And that's why your class was like, yep, that's what I want. So I have been working some patterns. I end up buying fabric because I want to see how the pattern works on the fabric. This pattern was one I did because I was frustrated about getting white lines in my in your pattern. pattern. So I did this and it didn't show white lines. Then last would have been January of 2020, I believe. I did this set of patterns oh my goodness those are beautiful and, but it started with this one. Oh, so pretty which i pulled colors but i wanted to try geometrics i'm a very geometric person i love the and fact I mean, that you're a geometric person because a lot of people come into doodles and they think all we do is flowers <laughs> and so oh. it's very important that people know no 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 you don't only have to do flowers you can do all kinds of fun shapes and geometrics yes. that's fabulous yeah, you wanted to tell us about the fact that you've been experimenting with my fabric designs spoon flower and a new company uh, that you've just discovered carriage house printery and I sent for a sample. I didn't have my files ready to send. And they're all about the same price. So that didn't bother me. But Carriage House is in Ohio. 
it's a husband and wife production team. They have a couple other people who help. The fabric is marvelous. So many people on that Facebook site that they have are actually people who sew kids clothing to sell in Etsy shops and whatever. And I got a sample packet of the fabric, which if anybody is going to ever order fabric, definitely pay for the sample packet of fabric. They send you, you know, for $5 a stack of fabric. Yeah, they give you little teeny and swatches of all of them that you have to get yeah. so you can feel them. This company has more than any other company, but the feel of all of it is wonderful. So many of you are familiar with with Spoonflower, because Spoonflower has been around, I think, for mm -hmm. a long time. They do have some good fabrics, but again, when if you want to use Spoonflower, make sure that you buy the you know four dollar and fifty cent swatch pack so you can feel them all. And they do add new fabrics all the time. A mm -hmm. newer company that I don't have any experience with is called My Fabric Designs. But the one that Nancy is sharing that is new to me and that she likes the best right now is called carriagehouseprintery.com, right? Uh, carriagehouseprintery.com. Mm -hmm. And so I will, I can totally share a link. I can put all three companies and share the links after the interview. But in the meantime, I just wanted to re-say that slowly so that people could take notes. So now tell us what's behind you. A couple of comments have popped up in the chat about tell, ask Nancy what she has behind her. I did not put all my 500 large quilts in a pile for you all. <laughs> but what I did was I made a wall design. Let's see if I can start. Yep, beautiful. This so is my uh, road home. Let's see. There it is. Road home, and it is Michigan. The white-tailed deer is our state animal, and there is a wild iris, which is our state flower, and the robin is our state bird. We have a state dragonfly, believe it or not. And then I'm at the apple blossom or cherry blossom, I, whichever one. I taught this in third grade. But anyway, <laughs> that is a quilted applique quilted piece I did for a group blog hop and the sunflower is one I did as a participant in a challenge and we had to show microscopic so I decided to take the stem of a sunflower and what it would look like if you cut it in half under the microscope. So that's all the tubes that the nutrients go up and down in the sunflower. Wow, Nancy, that is amazingly detailed. It's fabulous. Thank you. That's my Christmas. That's a beautiful <laughs> poinsettia, right? Is that supposed to be a poinsettia? Yes. Yeah, lovely. That was for a class. This was for us. It's a stained glass. It was for a challenge as well with another group. Great, it's so good to and do challenges, right? It, it forces you to- It really a lot gets of work. me to do things. <laughs> this one was another challenge. It was circles and spirals. So that's what I made and that's all fancy shiny wire or ribbon on there. Nice. And then another challenge with shimmer it was. Wow, those are amazing. And this was the latest one on Persimmon Dreams site. It was what's inside of you. Well, that's my brain with all those butterflies and ideas and things <laughs> I want to do. I love and, the self-portrait. It's fabulous. Yeah, my sister said, you got the lips right, Nancy. <laughs> Very thin. <laughs> and then down here I have a scrap piece. There it is. Where it is. Yep, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, it's a scrap piece. All my leftovers from a quilt. That oh, was another it. challenge for two-color quilt. And you have a lot of space. I do. My husband was kind enough to let me come out of the tiny little room. And he helped me organize this. I have a studio now. 
with lots of shelving and lots of totes with fabrics in. Yeah. A nice window. I have an embroidery machine back there. Fantastic. And I am going to learn to use it as a long arm quilting machine. So that's what I have set up there. And then more totes. Yeah, and, it's wonderful for you to have. Oh, wonderful. and look, my calendar. You've got your calendar, Nancy. That's great. Yes, I had to split it in half to open the doors. But oh, I love it. It works well. Can I pop over to your website now? Sure. And then you can give us a little bit of a tour of your um of your website. As I mentioned, there's a link to your website in the description for today's video for this broadcast. And so you have this wonderful website name, which is patchworkbreeze.com. So many things fabric. Now, how did you, you've had this name for quite some time because it used to be your blogspot name. So tell yes. us how you came up with the name. Um, I came up with it because I was at the point then teaching classes at a store. And my whole goal at teaching classes was that patchwork is a breeze to sew. You just need to know the little tricks and the steps. So that's what hopefully I can bring to people is that patchwork is a breeze. And I just do so many things fabric. I think it's fantastic. And I love the fact that we have this picture of you right on the welcome page. And you talk just a little bit about yourself over here. And of course, one of the things that's so important on your website is to have a place for people to subscribe so that they can get updates from you. Yes. And then you have some beautiful uh, current projects. So you have a little gallery area here and mm -hmm. there's contact to purchase, which is wonderful, right? That's yep. fantastic. And then you've got other really fun examples. And then I'm going to pop over because right up here, I also have Patchwork Breeze, which is your Instagram account. And it's wonderful. You've got the link to your website right up here. And so tell us a little bit about how you like to use Instagram. I started Instagram as a way to keep in touch with my family and my friends and just show them what I was doing daily. I've then focused now on my quilting and my patterns and my um, surface design. And That's I did change, fabulous. as you suggested, to a business patchwork breeze Instagram. It's fabulous that you've got all the same names. It's wonderful that you were able to do that. So now talk to us a little bit about what's next for you. My focus now on patterns. I have been selling things I make, mostly embroidered things, and at a consignment shop. Things for kids sell. And I found a few things that really do sell. And I thought, I love teaching. I want to make life easy for me. I'm going to use my surface design and I am going to start developing some cut and sew panels, which are, I ordered one from Spoonflower just to see what the people did to, you know, I'm not sure whose this is, but just to see what they did for setting up. Mm -hmm. This is a panda bear pillow, I guess. And I thought, if I can create the things, put them on, let people go and order their own thing, all I have to do is create and then collect the royalties and file my taxes. You know, yeah. it's like, let them do it. Let them order what they want. Then my daughter said to me, why don't you see if you can collaborate with somebody who sells subscription boxes for quilts or sewing or that? And I thought, well, that might be a great idea, too, because I'd still get the royalties. The company could ship it to those people that are going to package it. And I still wouldn't have to do much work. So that is one of my goals. Thing I wanted to make sure that you're aware of is that Mary Ann here in our community, Mary Ann Walker LeClaire, she has mm -hmm. a subscription box now right? I know. And so you and she might want to collaborate on things to include in her box, um, in addition to what she obviously puts into her box, but that could be some, some something quite interesting for you guys to think about. 
possibly. That could but, be. You know. Even if it was even if it was something little that kids could sew. There's a little girl across the street. I started showing her how to sew two years ago. She's now eleven. I'm going to invite her down to my new studio where I have one more machine she can use. And we'll sew. And for her, it was the most wonderful thing because mom doesn't really sew and mom was busy, so it gave mom some time. And then the mother said to me, well, I have friends who homeschool their children and they would love sewing lessons. And I'm going, okay, I'm a teaching type of person. I can do this. And I'm very patient with kids. <laughs> so, Yeah, that sounds um, like an amazing sweet spot for you. Yeah, I think it would be fun. And... Um, there is one other thing I am going to be working on, and I'll get to my prairie. We have a prairie, which isn't a big prairie, but Nuevo County does have this humongous prairie. And we have the Carner Blue Butterflies around here, which are very small little butterflies. The caterpillars only eat the leaves of the wild lupine and we have wild lupine in our prairie here when the trees start encroaching upon that it endangers the blue carner butterfly because it's giving no space for those wild lupines to grow and there is a a watercolorist who i met when i took free classes at our library who is working at getting the state legislator to say let's make the blue carner our state butterfly and i thought since they're around here i'm going to try to work at drawing or sketching wild lupine and blue carner and adding color to them and hopefully be able to put on some products and all these you know, shops around here, perhaps they can carry something and sell to the tourists. There are just a few states around where they have these prairies that are pine and oak prairies, and they're becoming endangered. So I thought I'd meet up with this watercolor artist and see what we can do together. So that is a beautiful prairie story. Years ago, you could purchase one yard of fabric that had printed animals on the front and the back with stitching directions that could be sewn mm -hmm. together making separate shaped pillows. This is something I would like to design myself with some of the animal designs I've created. Yeah, I think that would be mm -hmm. great, Jody. And another person commented, yeah. Nancy, about what a great idea it would be to create patchwork kits that you could then sell kind of like a subscription. Oh, yeah. Like one a month, right? You could have your own sort of- yes patchwork quilt subscription box and include mm -hmm. the your designs and the directions and any other supplies people That's... might need that could be really fun too of course we love to hear more about your you know creative journey and what's next for you and it sounds like you are full of ideas oh well just like that quilt back there the butterflies are flying all over <laughs> i do have patterns that i um sell exclusively on cut loose pattern and i have one pattern actually i hung it yeah, up that has done that extremely is. well yeah tell Let's us see. what that is we haven't talked about that cut loose okay. patterns the pattern is the tan or cream color and the leaves it's a table runner yeah it's beautiful and i don't know how clear it comes in but there's checkerboard in the yeah, middle there's there. checkerboard in the middle and then there are three leaves on either end right but right. tell us more about this. Cut Loose Patterns is a company, a subsidiary of a company called Checker Distributing, who in Ohio is a distributor for all kinds of sewing supplies, especially quilting. They developed a company to have people present patterns to them. They approve them or not. And you have to be able to put it on the front and back of one page. That's how the pattern is presented. So it has to be easy enough for people. They like you to incorporate some of their tools, which are creative grids mostly. Um, if anybody quilts, they're a special ruler made by their company called Creative Grids. And I have done a 
about eight or nine patterns. If you don't sell six a month for six months, they discontinue it and then you can do whatever you want with it. But this one that I showed you has been selling consistently since 2017 or 18 and they keep it coming because I sell enough of them. So I'm happy about that. But that's the other thing is I want to get back into designing for them. Again, all I have to do is design the pattern, have a few people test it. And then if they approve it, I'm on their little royalties check. Yeah, <laughs> just, so you know. indirect is also known as passive income, which is what you're describing right now, where you okay. do some work and then you pass that work off to another company and then they sell it for you and then it can sell forever. It can be sold and you're, somebody can be buying mm -hmm. it in your, while you're sleeping and then you get the royalty, <laughs> you get the royalty check, right? Mm -hmm. And so how did you actually discover, was that just a sort of a natural evolution of the of the research that you were doing in the quilting in the quilting community or how did you find them i actually at the time was working at a local quilt shop and they got the first few of some patterns and i said oh what's this and the owner explained it to me and i said well that sounds interesting so then i went and sent the company a question and they answered and said we'd be happy to look at your patterns and it's been is, fun. That is such a great example of sh your curiosity. So if anybody out mm -hmm. there is multitasking, you guys really have to pay attention <laughs> to what Nancy has just said here, because this is such a brilliant example of how your curiosity led you to ask the question in the quilt shop. Mm -hmm. And then you had the 10 seconds of courage that it took for you to then email the company to find out more. And then yep. you got a, yes, we'd love to see your patterns <laughs> answer and back. That, and that first pattern that they said, we'll take it. Here's the contract. It was like, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Yeah. But my mother, my mother always said the least or the worst they could say is no. Exactly. But if you don't ask, you won't so, even know what their yeah. answer is. That's right. So it can be super scary. I've seen a couple comments in the um, in the chat and I want to give a big shout out to Harpreet because she's really nervous about reaching out to companies to see if they'd be interested in licensing her work. And it is scary, but you mm -hmm. just need that 10 seconds of courage and you yep. get you have to have a thick skin because if you get a no, it's not personal. It's just that the fit that's or the right. timing wasn't right but it could be right in the future right could totally be right in the future mm -hmm. and um and so of course there's you're going to get more rejections than you're going to get yeses but yes. the more strategic you are about who you contact right it's just like a job when you want to find the right job you don't send your resume to a hundred random companies and when you want to get licensed, you don't send your information to a hundred random companies. You get super strategic about, well, where might I fit? What do I love to do? Mm -hmm. And what are companies that also love to do that thing? And that's where I'm going to specialize. And that's where I'm going to focus. Uh, so you will have to make sure that when we start doodles again at the so if anybody hasn't signed up for doodles yet you gotta sign up for doodles and it's super super fun and of course it's free mm -hmm. and the reason i brought it up is because i have downloadable guides and so as oh, yeah. when people print out my doodles cheat sheets i call them cheat sheets but they're sort of step-by-step -step guides they include words of course for the steps but mm -hmm. then they also have little pictures and anyway, so it sounds like you and I are on the same wavelength around how do you make it so people can understand it in written form when mm -hmm. what they're creating is either on screen or in their notebook or it's and gonna end up being a quilt. Right. What are your tips? For writing? Yeah, what are you, how do you, what's, what goes through your mind when you're doing something like um, that? Well, I do revise quite a bit. I might make four or five revisions on something because I'll read through it and say, wait a minute. But my tip is that I actually, the first writing I do, then I actually go and try to follow what I said to do. And if I hesitate, I have to evaluate, what was it that I 
didn't do right there. And I think having had a lot of different students in my little elementary classes, kindergarten through third grade, helped me see that there are a lot of different parts of brains working and some work differently than others. And um, so I will do three, four, five revisions, go through them step by step. I have made repeats of quilts three and four times. And I think that's why I'm glad I have a stash of fabric here because I just say, oh, I don't care what fabric I use. I just want to see if the pattern works. Your advice around reading through it, then actually following the directions to make sure you didn't miss any steps. And, right. um, and then I also really appreciate you saying that when you're learning how to do something for the first time, it's not about the pattern that you're making. It's about the process and mm -hmm. following the process. And so even if the final product is not your favorite pattern in the entire universe, that wasn't the point. The point was follow the directions and see if you can actually make it work properly because then the sky's the limit and you can go back and design different things and add more color and do something much more complicated. Yes. In fact, that was one of the things I think I overstepped when I first took your from doodles to dollars was I went, I should have just stuck with a leaf or just one daisy. And no, I had to do leaves and I had to do flowers and a few other things. And I think that got me all confused about the steps, which is why when I went through the academy, it helped. And then to have the list to go through, I sometimes have actually printed one of the pages, you know, to say, okay, this is what I'm doing. And I check off as I go because I don't have those steps down into my brain as well as I do, you know, 40 some years of quilting and sewing. Right. I know the mm -hmm. stitches, I know the, the needle and that type of thing versus, okay, where am I supposed to find that image trace? And it's funny because my image trace at the top does not give me the same things as if I go to the window mm -hmm. image trace. I get all the choices there. And I thought, I can't use that one at the top because it doesn't give me the black and white logo. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't give you like, so many more options. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Nancy, as we wrap up together, I want to say again how incredibly grateful I am that you were able to spend this time with us and to share about where you are in the world and all of the exciting things that you have been working on. Um, I couldn't be more excited to see how you continue to move forward from here. And I um, and please come and take doodles again if you'd like. If you'd like to, you're always welcome to take it as many I times as you up. want. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> it's always fun to have um, my OGs taking it again. And uh, and so people can follow you on your website, patchworkbreeze.com. Mm -hmm. They can also find you there on Instagram. And you also have a Pinterest account, right? You're quite yes. active, active on Pinterest. Tell us just a little bit about well, that as we wrap up. Um, Pinterest is Patchwork Breeze also. And I usually use that for saving ideas I see around on the internet more than what I post. There's so many incredible comments and oh, people are oh, thanking yeah. you for being so um, incredibly generous, describing your process, sharing your resources with them, mm. uh, your brainstorming ideas and how you go about kind of brainstorming your ideas. And uh, this has just been an incredible, incredibly motivating and inspiring interview. Well, I would like to thank everyone for watching and thank you, Anne, for having me. Um, you have been very, very influential in what I'm doing these days. So I appreciate that too. Well, listen, you know, we'll be in touch again very, very soon. And I, you guys know, I always like to say in closing that I am Anne LaFollette and it's never too late to create. So there you have it. I hope that you are enjoying this summer spotlight series and I look forward to seeing you again next week. I always like to say in closing that I am Anne LaFollett and it's never too late to create. Bye for now and I'll see you next week.
If you enjoyed this broadcast, don't forget to pop over to my website, annelafalletteart.com, and you'll land on a page that looks like this. If you scroll down just a little bit, I'm always highlighting in this banner area something new that's happening in my business or something that I would love for you to explore. And so always pop over here and check this area out. In addition, if you scroll down a little bit further, I'm always changing up my offerings in order to serve you best and continue to share the latest and greatest information about the surface design industry and how you can craft a career that you love in pattern design. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you can follow me on Instagram and then also pop over to my YouTube channel and I would love for you to hit the red subscribe button as well as the little bell so that you're notified whenever I have a new broadcast. Thank you so much for being a part of my creative community and bye for now.